everyone, take three. I've tried to film this video twice before and I don't know, just my mind is all over the place. I feel very sort of confused with, you know, emotions and feelings and things that came up and, and whatever. But I will do a separate catch up video on that. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that and let's focus on the actual art supplies. So throughout the month of April, I haven't had really that much opportunity to create because in the beginning of the month, I was um, rushing with finishing my website and setting up my new online shop. So that was super, super busy then. Then on the 10th of April, my parents arrived and for the next few weeks, it was insanely busy hosting, entertaining, uh, taking them to places, uh, catering, cooking, you know, just, just everything. It was, it was really full on, although, you know, mostly I enjoyed it, but it was just very, very, very busy. Oh, and then also when they arrived, I had a cold, which I, I was um, kind of, it was a really long cold that was quite annoying. So I had to deal with that as well. Then towards the end of April, I started craving uh, sort of the creative side and expressing myself through illustration. So uh, I went through one of my older sketchbooks and I've done a flip through of this and um, you can find it somewhere on my website in the playlist. And so I came across this illustration which I've done December 12th, 2020, which feels so, so long ago. And I decided to revisit it and kind of get some inspiration from this and maybe develop something out of it. So then I went to my, uh, so this is Tamoy River paper and this is the thicker one and the off-white. This is the white and the thinner one. I don't remember all the GSMs and everything, but I'll try to put it in the name for where I can. So basically, this is the lady that I have created. And I quite like this sort of textured, almost like a sweater type of a thing uh, around her neck. Usually my illustrations just have a neck with some sort of um, like a chalker type of thing. And uh, here I actually felt like adding this like a garment. You can see some of it in, in this illustration as well. So, so I've done that and then from that I decided to just experiment with inks and different fountain pens just to see the mark making that I enjoyed. It's been a really long time actually since I've done my um, fashion illustrations and I kind of started missing them a little bit. Also, when I was designing the botanical set, I was really looking forward to using some of the elements with the moving doll and the FOTD stamp sets, which is this one here, so you can create different faces of the day. So I kind of tried to find the right ink, the right thickness of the fountain pen that I liked. I, here I used a dip pen, I believe, and the Cacao Shimmer ink by Diamine, uh, just to get a little bit of a wash in places and so on. Here I started kind of mimicking slightly, where is it? My FOTD face shape, so this one here that you can create different looks with. By the way, all of these uh, products of mine that I'm showing today, they are available on my new website, alonacreates.com, and you can basically browse the online shop there and find everything you like. Then I thought, let me go into the bunny ears. I mean, we had not so recent, but just before my parents arrived, we had Easter. And so then the week after we had the Christian Easter. And so it was like lovely. Uh, I made those Pascha type of bakes. You know, I'll try to, if I can find the images, I'll try to pop them on here somewhere. Anyway, so basically uh, this is what I've been doing. Sorry if the lighting is a bit funny. It's sunny on this uh, part of the desk. And so it's kind of cancelling out the light, I think. Uh, so I added the bunny ears and 
when I illustrated this girl, I wanted to then go into my stamping sets and try and create a girl like her with my stamping set. So I went back to this sketchbook, which is the Midori MD cotton book, which I think was discontinued, if I remember correctly. So here is what I've done. With the stamp set, I basically created this version of the girl and really enjoyed it. But I have to say there's something about the thin Tamoy River paper that I enjoy drawing with, like with the fine tip. This is the same pen, but here it just looks thinner, the lines. And also I like how the Tamoy River pens look on this paper. So I'll just flip over and I'll show you that there is absolutely nothing that's coming through and I have done so much work on these eyes where I went over with Tomoe Rivers, no not Tomoe Rivers, with Tombow markers uh, like three or four times and this paper, super fine thin paper, just took it so well that there is like literally nothing. So I'll put the Tomoe River paper in any type of sketchbook. These particular ones are the good ink impressions, letterpress, handmade stationery that I bought quite a few of them on Etsy and um, I, I don't know if, if the shop still exists or not but have a look there. And this paper here, I don't know if you can see but basically we have got quite a few marks come through onto this side even though it's a much thicker paper so but having said that I still I enjoyed numerous um, different um, art supplies on this paper just to basically give you a quick flip through this is where I used a lot of things watercolors look lovely on here and also there was something else which I really really enjoyed uh, let's see I think it was here no this is, is this the alcohol yeah so these are the alcohol markers which i enjoyed on this paper as well so here i like the, uh, this art supply and i believe this was if i'm not mistaken it's the royal talents liquid watercolor is called i think you know those bottles with the pipettes so that looked really beautifully it blended so gorgeously where it needed to be blended uh, this illustration I also created with the FOTD and one of my, I think this might be sold out by now, some of the flower stem sets. So yeah, this paper is super fun and some, some things look really great on here. So I think this was Dalaroni acrylic ink and portrait pink and burnt sienna. Yeah, so I've done a wash of that and then went over with pencils. I prefer that much more to just going in with pencils. I think I'll show you another example where I just went with pencils and I didn't like her legs in the end. So I preferred much more the kind of like a watercolor wash and then adding pencil on top. So again, because I haven't been doing this for such a long time, it took me a while to figure things out. So where I'm going with this is I then just continue developing the same stamp set. So it's the moving doll. So this stamp set. Uh, here I just use the head for it. And then here again, I just use the head and then the rest illustrated onto it. So for example, if you didn't want to do the whole body thing, you can then just use the head for it. And the flower came from the botanical stamp set. So it's the like a lotus type of a flower. I just made it to look like a hat. And then here, the same lotus flower, I just moved things around, put this bit upside down and created like a garment, like a feathery skirt where you can see her arm is going through kind of between the petals here. This one is on top, like in front of the petals and the petals are in the background here. There is a number of things you can do. I actually just realized this part of the arm is missing here. So I need to add that on. And then what else? Yeah, and the crown I've used, I think these berries here. I just stamped them 
and then lined things out and added some watercolor and really enjoy that so in terms of when i say watercolor it's actually yeah all of these look like watercolor but they are tombos in actual fact so you can have this lovely watercolor effect same thing here you would think that this is watercolor but it's actually tombos and i really like how intense you can get the tombos versus uh, a very watery effect and there are ways of creating these kind of like what I really find beautiful these sort of edging if you can see it's like a blossoming edging or sometimes you call it cauliflower in the watercolor industry so based on that i'm going to give you a list of things that i have really enjoyed in terms of the color palette and um and supplies and things like that so i have a number of things here that i will swatch out for you so i have a little collection of tombos and these pens are the ones i used throughout the entire illustrations and it's just it it's sort of happen to be a consistent like a consistent color palette and those are these ones so what i also realized i actually have a lovely set that i would recommend this is called the portrait palette so you have got all the kind of main skin colors in here although i do like to add a bit of the what is it called? Ah, it doesn't have a number. I need to get a special sketchbook out that tells me all the numbers where I swatched them out. Okay, I got it. It's one of those days. I actually have a facial booked uh, this afternoon and I'm really looking forward to it. I, I'm so exhausted with everything. Um, okay, so let's look into the Tombos. So, what do we have here? Burnt Sienna, I think is the color that I just mentioned, the 947. And what's this color here? 977 is the saddle brown. So yeah, I personally like to add a few colors to this list. We also, I think I have some doubles here as well. So the 9942 is this one here as well. Okay, so <clears throat> let's watch them out. Also, I have decided that I'm going to add a few more of the Tombos. And when I was at Jackson's Art Physical Shop, there was, they had like all the colors available, but I didn't have my sketchbook with swatches, so I didn't want to buy repeats. And um, from now onwards, when I'm going somewhere, when I know I possibly will be shopping in an art shop, I tend to take my sketchbook with me. It's very small, so it doesn't, you know, it's not a big problem if you have like a small handbag. Um, and yeah, and I just basically uh, know exactly what I'm shopping for. So when I'm turning around to this leaf lad, there's loads of colors in this range and this range that I don't have yet now. Obviously, it's difficult to judge according to the um, to these swatches because the Chinese red, my Chinese red looks like this carmine. So I'd be curious to see what the carmine looks like. Um, yeah, it's just loads of kind of beautiful pinks and reds is what I'm going to order. And some of these kind of neutral uh, red toned browns and oranges. So that will be a thing to do and hopefully <laughs> that will uh, bring my spirits up. It's not that I my spirits are not up, I just feel like really, really all over the place. You know when you are kind of confused? <laughs> it's how I'm feeling. Anyway, so I'll give you a little um, swatch around. Oh, by the way, what also is coming is a cute little haul from Jackson's that I've done I think yeah during the month of April and I haven't been able to open things and swatch except for one pencil I couldn't resist it's the Caran Slate Grey which I ordered for the eyes 
but I realized I don't like it as much as the pencil I already had, which is the Sepia 10%, so I'm going to recommend this pencil. I love the eyes to be grey, just because I find as soon as I'm adding any other colour, it just knocks off the illustration, for me personally, like my style I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so I always stick to a specific grey colour. So, let's start with the Tombos, and then I will kind of go through here, some of these. Also, before I start, a couple of illustrations. So here I've used all the colors in the lips and the eyes I've used from my Ultimate Palette set. So I think it was the Strawberry Velvet on the lips and then the Quinacridon Gold Deep around the eyes. And they're also still available. These are my handmade uh, watercolors. They're still available on my um, website as well. Okay, so this is, and I need to look up the numbers and the colors. Now this is the 026, and it's the yellow gold, which is a great color. So I used it here in the, fl in the flower. What I like about Tombows, I don't like the kind of, um, I've got this set, which is the candy colors, not so much because they're so, so pale. I like their colors, the colors that are more kind of saturated, so I can get them lighter if I want to, but I also have the uh, vibrancy of the color as well. Okay, so then if you add some water, this is what you get, which is quite lovely. And then you can get these back runs, which are quite pretty, loads of water. Okay, next one is the 947, which we said is Burnt Sienna. Also, don't forget, they are double-ended, so if you wanted some, like, super fine dots or marks, they're brilliant for that. Okay, next one is 757, that is Port Red. Port Red has been a favorite color of mine for a long time, not just this month. And then we have this one, 772, that is blush. It literally is a color I use for blush. I really like how blush looks like. Sometimes I like adding it on a finish, finished illustration, just as a little scribble. And sometimes I add a bit of water on top just to soften it. And either way, it just looks so pretty. I'll try to find some examples. So here I added some water on top. Here also water on top. Here is a mix of things of like dubbing with my finger. Yeah, no, none of them. But for example, I can show you on this one. I could just take the marker and just kind of like scribble on top and just leave it like that as well. Because the brush is so soft, you get these kind of like marks, like a brush mark anyway. Okay, and now we have two light colors. This is the 942, which is tan, and I do like using that for um, Caucasian skin. Like I said, I would recommend that portrait set if you want a variety of skin tones. This is a great addition to um, to the eyes. So basically what I do is I start with either 
942 or 990, which is light sand, so tan or light sand. And then over it, I go with burnt sienna to create these kind of um, elements of the... Um, they're almost like bruises under the eyes, but I like them in the illustrations. In reality, you would not look great like that. You'd look tired. But in my style, I like the kind of the drama it adds, the character it adds to the, to the illustrations. So let me show you again. So we have got everywhere around the eyes. And here I just build it up quite a few times, adding water, adding water, and then blending it and then going on top again and sort of layering the color. Okay, so that's that. And then the last one is this blue color, which is N60. And that should be this one, cool gray six. This is a lovely color. So I use that in the bunny ears. Okay, so let me show you the bunny ears. So here, I've done that, as you can see. And in the other illustration as well. right here and you can see actually the color looks slightly different on the different papers here it almost looks a bit more purpley like lilac -y versus here exactly the same color so paper does change things slightly okay so we've got that and then let's move on to the pencil so this is the Caran d'Ache in my opinion, best watercolor pencils if you're new to art supplies or if you would like to try a good watercolor pencil, these are the top of the range in my um, opinion. They really are just like working with pigment in a pencil form. I have never come across this uh, before in a pencil. These are super smooth, gorgeous, gorgeous pencils. And the color is sepia 10%. So it becomes very milky, as you can see. Beautiful. Love this pencil for eyes, eye color. And then I have a couple here, which are sort of more kind of like mark making tools. And I've used quite a few gold um, elements in these illustrations. So I'll show you. <sighs> Was it here? So I've done some gold. I don't know if you can see, but here in the sweater, I first went with actually a new color from the Molotov, but more about that in the whole video. And then over the top, these layers so beautifully because it's a smooth acrylic surface. And then here I've done it over the ink. So that looks also quite lovely and then here is no gold and here are some polka dots just make sure whatever you layer this posca pan over that the illustration is completely dry let me see here some examples i think i've used it just in the bunny illustrations yeah i didn't use it anywhere here but it's so easy just to add a little bit of gold marks around you know like for example i would actually add some gold right here it would look lovely because it's a dark background and it just kind of makes it look like you know lilies when they have these dots it just looks really pretty and then you just kind of pull them out a bit like so that looks pretty so here's a little gold element. Just a little touch. When you look through your illustrations and you want to add like a little tiny finishing touch, sometimes a few gold dots can be it. Um, just as simple as that. So I'm just going to 
create a little nest or cluster of dots. And then I used this pen amongst all the others and I realized this is still my favorite when it comes to doll illustration. Sometimes when you don't illustrate for too long, you kind of think, well, let me try a different pen and see if I can enjoy it just as much. And I did that and the answer was no. I still love this pen. I love how fine the lines are. And in fact, I need to load it up with fresh ink because things are starting to dry up. And when I'm doing fast moves, like fast marks, such as my signature lash, then I get these kind of blanks and it's not my favorite look. Um, so basically, I just need to work on that because I like a solid line. Oh, I forgot the lashes here. <laughs> so that's what's missing. All right, well, she's going to get a lash for sure. Uh, but with the refill. Now, what I refill them with, I actually, is, um, I'm going to recommend the ink as well because I think you should buy it. Well, actually, you can't. Apparently, these have been discontinued. I can't believe that. I think... Um, Jane Davenport, she kind of did a knockoff of this pen. Well, I know that she sells it as her own and it looks exactly the same. So I don't know exactly the formalities and the legal side of things, but uh, if you want to get still a pen like this, I guess Jane Davenport would be a good place to check out. But the ink that I would recommend is of course a waterproof ink. So is this one here, Platinum Carbon Ink. And this is the Platinum Carbon Ink Pan, both made in Japan. And it's super black. It draws beautifully. Like I said, it's waterproof. So once you layer it, give it a few seconds to dry completely. And then you can go over any medium and it won't smudge. So it works beautifully for my illustrations. And the way you load it up is I probably should do it over some paper just to protect the desk. Let me just pull out my Bible mat. So here's how you do it. I'm just going to show you quickly. So there's some sort of a um, gadget here, like a plasticky thing like that. And I guess when you get to very, very low ink, it probably helps to gather it or something. No idea. So here's what you do, pull out this bit. So basically what I would do is first of all, just squeeze it all out. There wasn't much anyway. Stick it all the way down and then few times screw it sort of one direction, then empty it again and screw it up again. That usually does the job nicely and then have something like a napkin next to you so you can immediately clean it off if you get it somewhere you won't be most likely you won't be able to wash it off so this part goes back on and then what i would do is take paper and just make sure it's running smoothly that there is no air bubbles or anything there and once it's all smooth then you're ready for your lash action. There you go. It's nice and smooth now. I just need to remember <laughs> to check the levels of the ink for, for this pen. So you can see it's perfect. Okay, so that's that. And then I'll show you again. So the line is now a lot more solid after it's been refreshed with ink. Another pen I have enjoyed is, for example, on the eyes. So the nib is so thin here, you might scratch fiber of the paper quite quickly and you want to avoid doing that. So when I do things like larger parts of the illustration, for example, like this Alice band, or like I said, the thick eyeliner or the neck chalker. It's so solid and it's so perfect 
um, so I just fill it in really quickly with this pan right here. This is what I use it for. Or sometimes if I need to create like um, this sort of pattern dots or things like that, mark making, I use this pan. It's solid, it's easy and it kind of works really fast. The nib is soft in the sense that it's not going to scratch your paper. So these are the colors. I'm going to go ahead and write them down and give you a nice close up. All right, so here we go. So we have got yellow gold. So these are all, so these six and one, seven colors are all Tombos. Yellow gold, burnt sienna, port red, blush, tan, light sand, cool gray six. And then we have Caran d'Ache Sepia 10, which is the um, Museum Aquarelle pencil. Uniposca Gold, Platinum Carbon Ink Pen and Unipin Fine Liner Black. It doesn't have to be this specific um, Unipen. I like them, but I also quite like the Derwent Fine Liners. They work just as beautifully and I found out um, they keep their nib quite um, nice for, for uh, sometimes longer periods, but I just want to use up some of the are there? I have loads and loads of different fine li fine liners that I purchased to find out my favorites, and for now this one is doing a good job. But basically, most 0.5 fine liners will do a great job as well. So that is it for this month's favorites. I think it is way too long of a video, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Let me know uh, what colors or what sort of art supplies you have been using in the month of April. I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments. I don't have often time to respond to every comment, but I definitely read all of them. And that's when I put like a little heart to let you know that I read it. So thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.